Problem 974 gives us a short column in compression. It is a 12 inch diameter concrete cylinder with a steel W shape, wide flange shape, 6 by 15, right down the middle. And I drew it this way to give better clarity as to what's really going on in the picture. But we have a load of 57 kips coming down centrally located. And this concrete is rated at 2000 PSI. That will come in handy when we need to look up its modulus of elasticity. The question is what the stress on the steel and the stress on the concrete is. This is a statically indeterminate system, so we can't do everything by statics to figure these things out, but we'd still need to use the statics. We have to remember that this 57 kips is being resisted by an equal 57 kips from the bottom that's being transferred through the concrete and steel so one of the key things to remember in this situation is that the force on the steel plus the force on the concrete must be equal to 57 kips so that's one of our key governing equations. Another key equation that's going to drive this whole thing is that the deflection right here, this whole assembly will deflect just a tiny bit, but we are assuming that the steel deflects just as much as the concrete. Both of these will deflect the same amount so we're going to assume that the deflection of the concrete is equal to the deflection of the steel. One last thing is that this overall length is the same for both the steel and the concrete. This will definitely come in handy. So we're going to look at this as our key governing equation and plug the other things in as needed. Are you writing it? The deflection of the concrete is equal to the deflection of the steel. Now our deflection equation, according to Hooke's law, is the force times the length over the area times the modulus of elasticity. So we'll just put the subscripts in here, the force on the concrete times the length of the concrete all over the area of the concrete times the modulus of elasticity of the concrete equals the force of the steel times the length of the steel all divided by the area of the steel and the modulus of elasticity of the steel. This is our key setup. We can take care of a couple things right off the bat. This relationship, the length of the concrete is equal to the length of the steel, allows us to cancel out those two from either side. So I'll divide both sides by L and those factors cancel out. Now we're, we don't know the force of the concrete and the force of the steel, but we do know this relationship here. The area of the concrete and the area of the steel we can calculate and we can look up the moduli of elasticity of the two. So I'm going to rewrite this equation 
force of the steel is going to be equal to 57 kips minus the force on the concrete. So the top up here will be the force of the concrete over the area of the concrete. We'll deal with this in a second. The force on the steel, though, is 57 kips minus the force of the concrete. So now we've removed one of the unknowns. I'm going to take a step back and look at these four factors. First, let's look at areas. Area of the steel simply can be looked up in the table and it is 4.43 square inches. The area of the concrete is fairly easy to calculate. It's the area of that circle, which is pi times 12 inches quantity squared, all over 4 but we need to subtract the area that the steel is taking out. And that ends up as 108.7 square inches. So we've got the area of the steel, area of the concrete, good to go. And now we look up the moduli of elasticity. For steel, it's 29 times 10 to the 6th PSI. And we use this up here to determine the modulus of elasticity of the concrete. It's in one of the tables in your book. And ends up as 2.7 times 10 to the 6 PSI. Now we have everything that we need to plug into this equation. Here's the concrete for you, and for the steel, okay, now we have one equation and one unknown. Going through the algebra, we find out that the force on the concrete equal to 39,646 pounds, pretty much 40 kips, and the force on the steel is the remainder after the 57 kips subtracts the force of the concrete, 17,354 pounds. We use our normal stress equation. Normal stress equals the force over the area. And we use our areas here and here. And the stress of the concrete is 
365 PSI and the stress on the steel is 3917 PSI. Note that the load on the concrete is much greater than the load on the steel, but the stress on the steel is much greater than the stress on the concrete, primarily due to its much smaller area. Now the keys in this problem were identifying that the deflections of the two materials were going to be the same. Also, that the two forces on the respective materials were going to have to add up to 57 kips. And also, that the lengths of the two were going to be the same. Putting these three equations into a single equation here allowed us to remove one of the unknowns. Note that it does not matter what the length is. And allowed us to solve for these two remaining unknowns, the force on the concrete and the force on the steel.